two, one, and lift off. Tom Marshburn, Ravon Romanenko, and Chris Hatfield making their way towards the International Space Station. He's become an internet sensation right across the world with millions of fans. Chris Hadfield, who was the first man from Canada to walk in space, became an overnight hit when a video of him singing David Bowie's Space Oddity went viral, earning him the title The Singing Astronaut. Ground control to Major Tom. Ground control to Major Tom. Now with his feet firmly on the ground, Chris Hadfield is promoting his latest book worldwide called An Astronaut's Guide to Life on Earth. In just seven weeks, he's taking his New York Times bestseller around the globe, which tells his life story from watching the Apollo moon landings as a child to a career in the Air Force working as a test pilot to becoming one of Canada's first astronauts and eventually becoming the commander of the International Space Station. His latest stop was at the Science Museum in London, where he wowed a capacity crowd with his stories from space. I decided to be an astronaut when I was nine. Uh, it was well before I had any marketable skills at all. And it was well before Canada had an astronaut program. The real key is to make yourself into the person that you want to be and then see what the fates allow. It's the combination of something you've in visualized and trained for and thought about your entire life so that it's the manifestation of dreams coming real. At the same time, it is immensely visually and emotionally powerful to pull yourself out, to grab onto the hatch and carefully, methodically pull yourself out into the universe. You are suddenly in a place that is so visually, sensually different than, than any place you've ever been, where the world is suddenly not below your feet, quietly supporting you, but instead is a huge, rotating, multicolored, technicolored, texture-filled orb that is, that is dominating one side of your view, and the universe is around you and below you and above you and endlessly off to the other side in a, a textured depth of, of darkness that, that is uh, like something you've never seen. And you're in the middle holding on with one hand to a spaceship that is your only link with humanity. His tweets and pictures from space earned him an extensive fan base following of millions back here on Earth, making him one of the most popular people of 2013. And his popularity didn't wane at the Science Museum when an excited audience listened to his presentation and asked him questions about his life. What's my favorite planet and why do I like it? There are about 20 billion planets not much different than Earth. 20 billion. So I bet you my favorite planet is one of those. <laughs> Did I have a party when I came back to Earth? Yes, several. Four, three, two, one, and lift off. Tom Marshburn, Ramon Great Romanenko, little spaceship. Chris Takes about nine minutes to get to orbit. Take you from a standing start to five miles a second. And in the time we've been talking, we've gone all the way down to Italy. And this is uh, Mount Etna exploding or erupting. My, my son, Evan, who did the social media for the flight, had sent me an email saying, hey, Dad, Mount Etna is erupting. Take a picture of Mount Etna. So I was like a dad on vacation. I'm going, oh, OK. So I took a picture of Mount Etna. <laughs> and now we're over Australia, which is looks like nowhere else on Earth. And uh, if it's glowing orange, then you know you're over the Sahara. If it's glowing blue, you're just over the oceans. But if it's glowing like purple and yellow and red, then you know that you're over the outback because nowhere on earth looks like the outback. But it's on Twitter where Chris Hadfield's millions of followers can view his photos from space and get his views on almost anything both on and off earth. To be on board the space station for five months was a gift of time that allowed me not to just do the technical work that I was tasked with, but also to do my best to try and figure out ways to let other people see it and feel it and understand it also. And, as he has done in other countries he's visited, Chris Hadfield enjoyed an energetic and appreciative welcome from the British audience, so much so that he ran out of time answering questions and signing his book. So what next for the singing astronaut? Another visit to space? Another book to write? Or something altogether different? The uh, occupation of astronaut is extremely rare. The number of astronauts who have flown from my country is far less than the number of prime ministers we've had. You know, it's extremely rare. As a result, you have an obligation to teach, I think, or at least to enable. And I've spent the over two decades that I was an astronaut not just trying to do my job right, but also trying to explain it and, uh, and to inspire other people perhaps to do things that they didn't realize they had the opportunity to do. The purpose of the book, to hopefully give people something useful out of it. Some of the skills that I 
had to learn or develop or, um, or practice in order to succeed as an astronaut that maybe other people can use as well. Chris Hadfield's book, An Astronaut's Guide to Life, is published by Macmillan and is out now.